Now we're going to look at a graph that's called a stem and leaf plot. This is a graphing process that uses the actual data in the graph. So the numbers that are being used to determine the graph are part of the graph. So what will happen is to solve, to create this, is you're going to, I use the phrase, cut all of the numbers in the same place, like after the tens place or after the hundreds place. And the digit on the left of this cutting process will become your stem, and the digit on the right will become the leaf. Then what will happen is we're going to list those stems, the starter numbers, in order down the left-hand side. And even if there was a missing stem, you need to include that missing stem. But that won't be true of the leaves, and you'll see that in a minute. What will happen is for the leaves is these get listed to the right of each stem, which probably makes no sense until you see it. But here, you do leave a blank if an item is missing. The stems you don't, the leaves you do. So don't write a zero to fill in a blank spot. So now we're going to look at two examples of making a stem and leaf. So imagine I'm told just to use this following data and make a stem and leaf. So in my first example, I'm asked to cut each number after the first digit. Now I've listed them vertically and then um, cut them after the first digit. Obviously you don't need to take the time to cut them vertically. You could have come over here and amongst the original data divided everything after the first digit. So in between the tens and the hundreds. The problem is if you do that, if you think of the number that's listed first as being the stem, you'll notice from whichever section you're looking at, we only have one stem. We just have a stem of the number seven. And so it's kind of like having a table with one row. And the whole point of a table is to kind of break up the data. So that's a little confusing here. The other thing is just a follow up. What happens is after the seven, I would have a 56. After the seven, I have a 54. After the seven, I have a 61. So you can kind of see how the leaves go from looking at this. But we also just discovered this was a bad choice. So let's look at another example. Let's look at case B. And in case B, this time I'm asked to cut each number after the second digit, so in between the ones and the tens. So had I not done it in the vertical list below, I would have come over here. And I would have seen all of my different stems. And the thing to notice is that I'm either going to have 75 or I'm going to have 76 as a stem. Don't forget you want to put them in order. So I listed the 75 and then the 76. And then I start listing my leaves. So the way that that works is after a 50, sorry, after a 75, I put a 6. After 75, I put a 4. After 76, I put a 1. After 76, I put a 7. After 75, I put a 0. So a lot of messy stuff. The thing to notice, though, is I didn't list my leaves in order. They could or be in order, but it doesn't matter. But also, I wanted each time I listed a new leaf that it was vertically above any or below, I guess, any leaf that was already there. So I don't want something where I had squished it and had six, four, zero really close together and the one and the seven spilled out. So among these two examples, the second one's better. This would be my graph, my stem and leaf plot. And the other thing to notice is essentially this is like a histogram on its side. I mean, if you thought of turning the heights by the um, number of leaves, I would have had something that looked, you know, had a 75 on the bottom and a 76 with, you know, a height of three and a height of two. Can you kind of see it as a histogram on its side? 